Hello, we're here today with Dr. Stephen Quay, who is the CEO of Atosa Therapeutics, trading on the NASDAQ under the symbol ATOS. Stephen, thanks for joining us today. Great to be here. Let's start with the big picture. You're developing Z and Doxifen, which has shown best in class potential across the breast cancer treatment paradigm. What sets this apart from current treatment options? Pretty simple. You get, the way you best in class is you do two things to the cancer, not one. So all of the other endocrine therapies block estrogen binding. And Doxifen does that. And then in addition, it causes the cell to commit suicide. That's its double punch that works so well. Metastatic breast cancer, that's your lead focus. Now, can you explain what makes this such a high need area and why Atosa chose it as its first indication? Yeah, so just a little bit of background. If you can get the breast cancer when it's still in the breast, it is curable in almost all cases. But once it's metastatic, which by definition means it's somewhere in the body, typically in the bones, sometimes in the brain, uh, you're in a very different space where you're trying to give the person as much quality of life as you can, but you're probably not going to cure it. This is a really high need, uh, and we believe this double function of, of endoxin, of being able to hit estrogen and cause the cells to commit suicide, is going to really help these women uh, extend the life, extend the quality of life, and that's, that's really important. Now, Stephen, you're also developing endoxifen for breast cancer prevention and earlier stage treatment. What's the opportunity there, and what has the Charisma study shown so far? Well, look, look at, um, to prevent a disease, to prevent a disease like breast cancer would be phenomenal. Um, women would never have to worry about it. Um, it's, it, you know, even though we're curing women with cancer that's inside the breast, there's still, uh, you know, a lot of trauma. Uh, and, and the like. So being able to identify women who are going to get breast cancer in the next four or five, six years, uh, and then treat them with a drug that's not much different than a sugar pill, that is its side effects are very similar there, uh, would be, would be game-changing. Uh, every minute that we're having this interview, a woman's being diagnosed with breast cancer in the United States. Um, and so we would be able to stop maybe 100 to 125,000 women from getting breast cancer. Now, what is the status of your current clinical development programs, and what are the key upcoming milestones investors should be watching for in this year, 2025, and beyond? Yeah, so we, we announced uh, the, whole, the first half of this year was focusing on what we needed to do to get the drug prepared for a registration trial for FDA approval. Uh, that's when we announced the metastatic route. Uh, we're working with the FDA. We're working with contract research organizations. This will be an international study. Uh, so, uh, you know, when, when we're up and running 24-7 somewhere in the world, uh, people will be looking at going into this clinical trial. So that's been a focus in the first half of the year. But we still have very important ongoing trials in what's called the neoadjuvant setting, which is between first diagnosis and surgery, a four to six month window of, of time uh, in both monotherapy and in combination with Lilly's, uh, you know, uh, uh, top drug, uh, bemaciplib. So uh, there will be a lot of reporting, uh, both at, in scientific meetings and, you know, at, as we go along here on FDA path, CRO recruitment, uh, and the clinical trials themselves. Turning to finances, you recently reported having more than $65 million in cash and zero debt. How does that position you for the road ahead? Well, we're, we're in the top 20 or 10% of all biotech companies that have two years worth of runway. Uh, clearly, these trials that we'll be doing in 2026 will cost more. Uh, but for now, we're in a very good financial position. And again, you know, not having debt is, is you know, gets back to my Scottish heritage where, uh, you know, you just, you don't want to have debt if you can, if you can help it. Now, in summary, what is the essential value proposition? Why should investors take an interest in Atosa today? Because by the end of this year, we intend to have our first patient uh, in the trial that, the, that, we, that we will be doing to lead to registration, to lead to FDA approval. Um, and so the next six months are going to be a lot of work inside the company, 
Uh, but as we report that out, we'll be in a different space with respect to the community of biotech companies, again, with a lot of cash in our balance sheet. So this is the time to get in at the prices that we're at. It is an attractive story indeed, Stephen. Thank you for sharing a TOSA story with us today. Glad to be here.